So we were planning on moving to Florida, but plans have changed. And our dream to move to Florida has essentially been shattered. Thanks to the Fed, thanks to the drastic change in affordability in the state of Florida. It's just wild. It's just wild. You know, at one point, Florida was cheap and it was a great vacation destination and you know the value of you know living in florida was just incredible there was no state income taxes beautiful weather you know palm trees but you know florida's different and the fed hasn't helped to make florida more affordable in fact the fed has made florida less affordable so and i feel like you know i'm not the only one in this situation I feel like more and more people are probably going to be saying to themselves, nah, you know, I wanted to move to Florida, but Florida is no longer affordable. And they're probably going to consider some new options. And even more scary than that is people who live in Florida now may say to themselves, maybe Florida is not for me anymore. Maybe Florida has priced me out of the market and now I have to leave Florida. Uh, this is just my assumption. But just looking at the mathematics, looking at the economics, I just don't see that Florida is as affordable as it once was. And there's a lot of shock. There's a lot of there's a lot of new things that are happening that a lot of people just are not aware of. And they're getting blindsided by these things. Uh, both people who recently purchased uh, property in Florida, uh, they're experiencing tremendous buyer's remorse. I've talked to a number of different real estate agents. Um, we were just in Florida uh, a couple days ago. Uh, we had a great time. We we're looking at different properties. We we're hanging out at the beach, you know, beautiful shores, um, enjoying the beautiful weather, me and the family. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we looked at properties. And I'm just like, the value is not there. The value is just not there. And there's certain metrics that I like to look at. But, you know, there's a number of different reasons that a lot of people who live in Florida are probably going to start looking to leave. So, you know, you got to look at the fact that the rising cost of Florida is just astronomical. In fact, I was looking at some properties for sale that we wanted to purchase. Nothing crazy. Three bedroom, um, three bedroom, three bath home that was literally almost three times more expensive today than it was in 2019. So in four years this seller is asking for three times what they paid for the property. Insane. Like, this is a bubble, if you ask me. Um, so, you know, and, and I'm not even saying, like, I'm not interested in the property because I think the housing market is going to crash. I'm just saying I just don't see Florida being a good financial move. I don't think it's anywhere near as affordable as it once was. And I really doubt that anyone's going to argue with me on that one. And if you do, you know, feel free to drop me a comment down below if you disagree, if you think Florida's cheap, if you think Florida's still a good deal, you know, hit me up in the comments, but I don't see it, you know. Um, you've also got, you know, different home renovations that people have made over the last couple of years. Um, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's has been packed and they, you know, I've been looking at Home Depot and Lowe's stock and, and, and they're stocks have been doing tremendously well because so many people were making home renovations but now you know even now it's like it's almost helped to lock people into their homes because now they put more money into their houses and now they need to they, they're, they're feeling a need to try to get this money out some sellers are feeling super greedy and they're trying to get top of the market prices but then interest rates are much higher so it's much less affordable from a mortgage payment a monthly mortgage payment standpoint for a lot of different bar, bar, uh, buyers and borrowers um, and but if you look at the fact that homeowners association fees um, homeowners insurance these expenses for existing homeowners have gone through the roof and people who have called Florida home for so many years they're gonna be in a situation where they're like oh my god you know even if you had a paid-off house you might be spending more between your homeowners association fee, especially if you live in a condo. Uh, you may be spending more between your homeowners insurance, which is likely tripled for many people, your HOA fees, your homeowners association fees, which if you live in a condo, 
Um, I know a, a number of different condominium owners uh, that used to lift, list their properties on Airbnb and VRBO and all this other stuff. They're seeing their condo fees increase, uh, their HOA fees for the condo double and triple in price. Not exaggerating this, folks. And, you know, so I think that a lot of people are probably going to be listing their houses for sale. And it's funny because I was talking to real estate agents and I don't even know, I don't know if this real estate agent that I talked to recently just doesn't know any better or they're just trying to get a sale, but they're pretty confident that the housing market is going to stay where it's at and stay strong. I don't know. I just... I just don't see it. I see more people likely to list their homes and I'm starting to see more and more prices come down. And I'm wondering if we have already passed the peak of home prices in Florida and now we're going to begin the descent because this is really unsustainable. And when you look at how much people make, how much people earn in the state of Florida, uh, excuse me, when you look at how much people earn in the cities, within Florida where these homes are listed, the incomes really can't support how much it costs to live there now. So I think it's only a matter of time, you know? Um, now, that's just my own personal experience, um, but homeowners insurance premiums and their deductibles have increased by 27%, you know? You got HOAs, um, you know, and that's on average. Some homeowners insurance premiums and deductibles have doubled tripled HOA, HOA fees have increased for you know other people due to insurance uh, claims that have been filed thanks to Hurricane Ian uh, and a number of other natural disasters and this has actually forced a lot of insurance companies just to completely leave the state of Florida property taxes increased tremendously um, with all of the real estate and housing market appreciation of course the city wants to get their cut the counties want to get their cut. So insurance or uh, property taxes have gone up. So of course, that's added cost. That's added, you know, expense for the existing homeowners who live in the state of Florida. And of course, it's more expensive for people who wanted to move to Florida because the property taxes are now more expensive. You know, it's like the, the benefit that you got from uh, not having a state income tax is negated by the fact that you have significantly higher other expenses like property taxes and HOA fees and property insurance and higher mortgage interest rates, you know, driving up the cost of the mortgage payment, right? Um, you know, uh, I mean, heck, you know, my car insurance has gone up. Now, granted, I don't have a, I don't have a car insured in the state of Florida, but it's like, you know, my car insurance has gone up even though I haven't filed any claims in years. Homeowner's insurance has gone up, even though I haven't filed any claims in years. I mean, it, so it, it's, it's getting bad is what I'm saying. Rental prices have increased though. So, you know, from an investor standpoint, you know, rental prices have increased, but um, from a buyer standpoint, it's really gonna it's really gonna price people out of the markets. So if we see more and more people getting priced out of the markets who are trying to buy in the state of Florida, um, and then you couple that with, so that's reduced demand. What is what I'm saying? If you see, if you look at the economics and more and more buyers are getting priced out of the market, hey, I can't afford it, or the bank won't approve me to get the loan amount that I need for the current prices based on the fact that interest rates are higher and they're saying that my debt to income ratio is out of whack. And so, you know, hey, we used to be able to give you, we used, we could have uh, approved you for $800,000 for a, a mortgage two years ago, but since interest rates have essentially doubled and then some, we can only give you a mortgage of say $600,000. Well, this is gonna drastically cut down on what that buyer could buy. Um, food prices. I mean, on average, food prices had to have increased a good 15, you know, 10, 15, 20%, right? Um, for the state of Florida, probably across the United States, you know, if I, if I look at it from that standpoint, um, you've got increasing, and, and of course, you know, <laughs> psychologically, who wants to pay the increase in home prices today compared to 
where they were three or four years ago. I mean, Florida home values increased at least 80% in the last five years. And in some, certain pockets of Florida, they have increased 200, 300% in within five years. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so a house bought in 2020 is worth significantly more than the purchase price. You know, uh, you know, a decrease in inventory is also driving up home values, right? So there's a lot of different variables that are causing it to be way more expensive in Florida. And I think a lot of people now are like, all right, maybe Florida is not for me. You know, now I'm not saying like Myrtle Beach is, you know, going to be the next place where people flock to because Myrtle Beach is cool, but it's still not Florida. Cool thing about Myrtle Beach area, though, it doesn't have the natural disasters, uh, the frequency of natural disasters that Florida has. So that is a plus. But, you know, it's like, do you really want to live there? Um, you know, is that a is that a good trade off? I'm going to leave that for you guys to, to to decide, to determine. But, you know, it is a lot cheaper. It is a lot cheaper. But, you know, Florida's desire, desirability is still very high. It's just, it's just so much more expensive now. And, unfortunately, this is really just kind of pushing us away from being able to, uh, to move to Florida, to relocate to Florida like we wanted to. Now, hopefully, you know, some things change. Now, uh, what could change to make this happen? Maybe the Fed decides, hey, we're going to lower interest rates, um, you know, because the economy has been driven into a recession. We raised interest rates too quickly, too fast. Maybe the Fed has to pull back. That's a very unlikely scenario, in my opinion, but it is a possibility. Um, you know, hey, if we win the lottery and, you know, stumble across a couple million dollars, maybe we will buy these prices and say, screw it, right? But another unrealistic situation or scenario, especially since I don't even play the lottery, right? Um, but, you know, in all, in all honesty, you know, it's, it's, it's presenting some serious challenges for people who live in Florida, for people who want to move to Florida, uh, even investors who want to purchase uh, properties in Florida. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is, this is the reality of where we're at. Uh, I think that these are just some of the difficulties. And then just think about the lower income segment of the market. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're a middle class income earner, higher income earner, you're, you're probably, you're seeing the, you're seeing what's happening with inflation, with this, uh, with the economy, but you're not quite as affected more than likely, assuming you don't have mountains and mountains of debt compared to like a lower income individual or family, lower income families. Oh, they're, they're feeling, they're going to always feel the pain first. It's kind of like, you know, if there was a flood and you live in a building, the people on the first floor, assuming like the lower income is on the lower floors and the higher incomes on the higher floors, anytime that there is a flood, the lower, you know, a flood or a, uh, an economic disaster or higher inflation or, you know, any of those things, people who live in on, on the, on the lower floors, they're going to be the first to be impacted, right? So the lower income segment of the markets are always going to feel the pain first, you know, and then later on, you know, as you move, as, as, if things continue to get worse, then the higher floors or the higher income earners begin to be affected. But, um, yeah, that's just the way it is. And, you know, just talking to different waiters and waitresses, like, um, you know, we were out, um, uh, at a couple of different bars in the Florida area, just enjoying, enjoying ourselves and, you know, talking to the different waiters and waitresses, they're talking about how they're getting squeezed because they're only making like two, three dollars an hour. And they're living essentially 100% off of tips. And, you know, some patrons are trying to cut back either, you know, not go to the restaurants as much or maybe cut back on how much they're willing to tip. So that's affecting them. So, you know, it, it's it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Um, so, you know, this is, this is certainly going to present some unique budgetary challenges um, and it, it's going to be real interesting to see how this plays out. We still want to move there. So at some point in time, I'm pretty sure an opportunity is going to open up. But right now, it's just not for us. So anyway, if you guys made it this far in the video, do me a favor. Drop a quick like for the video. Also, subscribe to the channel. I really, really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to keep dropping more content for you guys.
uh, definitely subscribe, share this video, and, and let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this video resonated with anyone. Um, I hope to hear from you guys soon. Y'all be safe.